Hi guys, my name's Ben Taylor and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about the Panasonic S1. Let's roll that intro. If this is your first time arriving on my channel, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell. This just means you can sit back and relax while YouTube sends you the good stuff. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing with you the Panasonic S1. I'm going to be sharing with you all the information so that you can make your mind up if you want to buy it or not. The Panasonic S1 is a 24 megapixel full frame mirrorless camera and at last Panasonic has joined the likes of Nikon, Sony and yes, okay, Canon in the full frame mirrorless market. This is a 24 megapixel camera and it comes with a CMOS sensor. So it's very similar to the likes of the Z6 and the Sony a7 III. If we look at this camera externally to start with, it's made up of a magnesium alloy, which probably means absolutely nothing to you. But basically put, it means that it's durable and it also feels refined to touch. Also, the body is weather sealed, which is fantastic because this means it's going to protect you against the harsher conditions. The size of the camera is actually quite big. It's very similar to the size of the Nikon Z6. Now, this doesn't mean it's massive by any means, but it does mean that it's bigger than some of its rivals, like the Sony a7 III. This extra size has not been put to waste though, as the external of the Panasonic Lumix S1 is feature rich to say the least. If we come round to the back of the Lumix S1, you can see straight away it has a 3.2 inch touchscreen display. And at the moment, this screen offers the highest resolution around. It has a triangle tilt screen, which means that it can be viewed vertically and horizontally. But I'm never really that impressed by anything other than an articulated screen. And also Panasonic have uh, offered this on some of their micro third cameras. So I'm not quite sure why they haven't transferred this over to their full frame. On the side of the Lumix S1 camera body, you can see that there are two card slots, one for the SD UHS-2, the other for the XQD. You also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket and a full size HDMI. Thank you very much, Panasonic. You also have the ability to add a Panasonic XLR1 mic adapter. This will support any professional XLR mics and any other input devices. One really impressive feature about the Panasonic S1 is it has IBIS built in to five stops, which is incredible. And to add to that, if you use the new Lumix S range of lenses, which Panasonic have released three of them, alongside this, you get a full six stops of stabilization. That's going to get rid of most unwanted camera shake. Now the S1 has a respectable 9 frames per second continuous shooting speed, but unfortunately this drops to 6 frames a second if the first shot is not locked on focus. There is a fallback to this though, because the Panasonic S1 offers something called 6K photo mode. Now if you don't know what this is, it basically means that you can shoot a 6K video and take an 18 megapixel still picture from it. You might still be a bit confused, but it basically means you can take an 18 megapixel picture from a video. The Lumix S1 comes with an OLED viewfinder display, and as of this video, it has the highest resolution currently out there. Now this means that you're gonna get super sharp and crispy images through the viewfinder and also the menu section. A lot of people have also been talking about the S1 for its video capabilities though, and not just its photo capabilities. Impressively, the camera shoots 4K at 60 frames a second, and it also shoots 1080p at 180 frames per second, providing you with some beautiful slow motion footage. I will say there is a drawback with the 4K 60 frames a second though. This is that it does have a crop attached to it, but this is only at the 60 frames per second. Now the S1R, which is the sister to this camera, or let's say the bigger brother, does actually shoot 4K 60 frames per second without a crop. So they have provided that, just unfortunately, not in this model. Now something which has caused a bit of negative press around the S1 is its autofocus. Now you probably know if you own a Panasonic that they use contrast-based autofocus depth by defocus. 
Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but I think this is one subject which is highly misunderstood by a lot of people. It gets a lot of negative press because contrast-based autofocus is seen as not being as good as phase detection or hybrid focus. Or if you're in a Canon, then you're going to be looking at dual pixel focus. Now, different kinds of autofocus and all the details involved in them is a whole labyrinth to get involved into, which I'm not going to in this video. But contrast-based autofocus is actually very accurate and quick. But unfortunately, it's not particularly good with moving subjects. It's better if the subjects are quite static and then it offers very good autofocus. Now, Panasonic have introduced a feature called face, eye and body detection, which is pretty cool, actually. It surrounds the subjects in the video with a box and then it's able to track onto and keeping multiple focus points going at once. So even though contrast-based focus may have some negatives, it certainly has lots of positives as well. And it should definitely not be a deal breaker when you're considering buying this camera. Now one really important thing to discuss alongside the S1 release will be lens selection. Now Panasonic have mentioned that they will be releasing the Lumix S range of lenses. These will be compatible with the S1 and the S1R. The three lenses consist of a 24 to through to 105 f4, a 50mm f1.4 and finally a 73 to 200mm f4. Now if you want any other lenses outside of this you're going to be looking at the Leica lenses which fit the Panasonic mount. Mm -hmm. Now we all know Leica have great quality but unfortunately they also have a high price. My final opinion on the Panasonic S1 is a good one. It looks like it's set to be a solid all-rounder that provides both good photos and good videos. Now, this means that it will compete nicely with other cameras of the same price range in the market, such as the Nikon Z6 and the Sony a7 III. Panasonic are certainly not lagging behind with this camera, and I think it's a great addition to the ongoing battle of the full-frame mirrorless cameras. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and remember if this is your first time arriving here, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, sit back, and let YouTube send you the good stuff. Whatever you do today, guys, I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video.